Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Augustus the Animator. Today you will be learning how to do this super groovy text animation that you see here using only the text animator tool in After Effects. I did not know how to use this tool for the longest time. I thought it was clunky, not intuitive. It is kind of not intuitive, but once you actually learn how to use it and understand it, it becomes a very powerful tool. So I'm gonna make it as easy as possible to learn. I hope that you do have a much better understanding after watching this. So let's dive in and get started. All right, I've set up a composition here with this groovy animation where a word is just popping in and then overshooting and then bouncing back a little bit below its final position and then resting in its final position. It's got some nice overshoot happening and you know it's kind of the love you put into any like object or word coming on or off screen as you're animating whatever. I would like to teach you how to get this amount of control with a text animator and so we'll be, we'll be using this sort of setup as a reference except doing it per letter and it's going to look super groovy as you can see and let's get started. I'm just going to turn this guy, actually I'm going to duplicate him, turn him off, hit U to bring up these keys, delete them just so we have the word groovy sitting on screen not animating and what we're going to do is uh, twirl down this little dude, click animate, and do, oh my gosh, position. You can of course do any of those you'd like, but we're just gonna do position today to make it easy. And what we're gonna do is change the name of animator one to starting position. Did you even know you could change the names of these? <laughs> I didn't until recently. Okay, so starting position we are going to start down here like we did with the reference word that I had. All right, so it's off screen and I'm gonna make note that this is, let's just do 620, um, is the Y position here, uh, which is great. And so now that guy is good to go. We are just going to duplicate him, which maybe seems counterintuitive. So duplicate him, we now have, we'll call this, overshoot because this animator is going to create the overshoot that we want so what we're going to do we're going to command click to twirl this down to get all of our options let's actually oops make some more room here so we can see this zoom out here the first thing we're going to do is adjust the position to be oh my lord um, we're gonna, so we're going to do negative 620 to completely counteract this first starting position that we have. And then we're actually going to crank it a bit more to overshoot. So we'll say not 666. 665 is great. And next we're going to change the shape. And that's the shape of kind of like the box that affects these letters as it slides through. That'll make more sense in a second. We're going to click ramp down and as you can see it's a ramp down and it's going to offset the amount or the um, effect that this animator has on the letters so now instead of adjusting for our range selector instead of adjusting you know um, how much of the word it's affecting we're just going to crank offset all the way to negative 100 keyframe that bad boy, go forward, we'll say 10 or so frames, crank it all the way to 100, and now this is resting, um, let's see, because we started at 620 for the Y position and now we're at 665, this is 45 pixels above our resting position, or our final resting position. So we have a good start. So this animator is going to just create our first, our overshoot. So like this keyframe, because this keyframe on the other one, let's quickly shut this off and turn this guy on. This is the keyframe that makes it shoot up the highest. And that's what we're doing with this, an with, uh, this animator. All right, and we continue. Okay, so we've got that super duper. I don't like that this is like a perfect little ladder or perfect little ramp down. So we're going to 
affect this ramp down by easing, what are we gonna do, ease high, which is basically like easy easing this keyframe. So as you can see now, um, you know, it creates like a curvature shape, so it's gonna shoot up quickly and easy ease into it, just like you did with this keyframe here, basically. And so we'll say, let's do like 50%. It's like a nice, good number. Um, great. So that is great for right now. And now what we're gonna do is to save some clicking, I think we're gonna duplicate this dude, so overshoot. And that's great, because I wanna call him overshoot too. Let's command click this arrow down so we have all of our options. And for position, we're gonna do, first let's put in zero. Oop, that was on the wrong one. Yeah, let's actually click to twirl this down because it ends up being pretty confusing to look at all of this. There's just a lot happening. So don't make that mistake. This is the position we want right here. I'm gonna hit zero just for now to show you that like if, I, if there's no uh, values here, it's not gonna affect anything. And we now just want to do this keyframe basically, which was shooting just below our final resting position. And so just below, since we're already hovering 45 frames above where we want to be because of the difference between these two numbers, with this, we're going to do, 40, let's put in 45, because that'll be our final resting position but we want to do it a bit further down to get that nice little bit of second overshoot. So let's do like 55 and it'll be, uh, just kidding, let's do 60. And then that will be 15 pixels below our final resting point. Uh, and so now, if you don't, now it looks like nothing much is happening, but what you'll want to do is offset this off, you want to offset the offset keyframes. So let's just grab them and just shift them like mm, three frames to the right. And oh my gosh, look at that. So by offsetting this, it allows this animator to have time to reach its final position. And then these will, um, this animator comes into effect and sweeps across it and makes everything go down. So if we pushed it, you know, to the right much more, everything would go up and then it would go down. And that looks lame. We want it to look like a smooth wave. And so you can adjust your offset or offset your offset keyframes as much as you'd like. But by keeping them somewhat close, you get this lovely little wave. Whew. Great. One more and we're done. Wow. Isn't that great? Okay. Click and duplicate. Let's name this final position, because this will be our final resting position of this word groovy. And let's do zero just for our brains right now. Is that right? No, it's not, because I did the same thing again. Let's twirl down final position, the final position animator. Go down to position for this guy. Hit zero for our brains. And remember that we are currently 15 pixels below where we want to be. So we're going to do negative 15, because that moves us up. And that will put us to our final resting position. And again, we are just going to grab these offset keyframes and offset them. Probably three or so to the right. And now you can see, let's zoom in just to get a bit more. We go up, then we go down, and then we go up again. Woo. Wow, isn't that just groovy? And that is it. So as like a brief recap, because I know that this is can be confusing, you have your different animators. So starting, put it where you want it to be. That's like your first keyframe down here. And then every animator that you create after that, you will be basically recreating the keyframes here. If you're going, if you want to do it, you know, in the in that same motion, and as the range selector offset value changes, which is what we've keyframed, that effect or that position will sweep across the length of the word. 
and I know that's a bit confusing, but I think it helps to think of each of these keyframes as an animator and vice versa. And then if we just hit U to condense this, you'll want to offset your offset keyframes and then you get a groovy little wave. And that is it. And this is really scratching the surface of what you can do with a text animator. Uh, as I'm sure you saw, you can do all kinds of different properties and there's tons of power with that. But and once you know how to use it in a smooth way, which took me the longest time to understand because it's not a really intuitive tool, then you can do just about anything with a text animator and it becomes a very powerful tool instead of a super counterintuitive tool, I think. All right, that's it. That's groovy. I think it'd be super groovy if you learned something today. If you thought the video was groovy, give me a like, give me a subscribe. It makes me feel great and also helps my channel and I would very much appreciate it. And I hope you all have a great day.